If you sit here like that, absolutely all inclusive, you are in touch with truth. If you are in touch with truth, there can be no suffering in you. It's as simple as that. Someone with great wisdom and greater foresight had once said, children are the priority, change is the reality, and collaboration is the strategy. A pact of trust and fellowship between teachers and parents has always been essential. However, the value of this was never more evident than during the pandemic as we tried to carry on the teaching learning process. Very good afternoon, dear partners. National Education Policy 2020 has been announced. The target is to take it to fruition by 2035. The vision of the policy is to take the students back to their roots, which are enriched by an ancient yet admirable education system. The curriculum and pedagogy must inculcate a sense of respect towards our fundamental duties and the constitution of India. They must take pride in all that is Indian as they step into the world. They do so with a humane outlook and the desire to contribute to the sustainable development of the world, just as a true global citizen must. I would now like to invite our guiding light, our very own principal, Ma'am Saha, to address this virtual audience. Thank you, Sharbani. Good afternoon and a very, very warm welcome to all parents, well-wishers, supporters, and my teachers, such core members of our beautiful Mahadevi Birla World Academy family. It's indeed a matter of great joy that we are slowly coming back to campus and we hope very soon our children will also be back with us with our campus coming back to life once again. It's so sad to walk into campus a campus bereft of children. So we need our children back with us. Dear parents, thank you so much for looking after them in the meanwhile. And slowly but surely, I think we'll once again come back together on campus with learning coming alive, with joy in the classroom, with our corridors resounding with the sounds of laughter and sunshine filtering in through all our doors and windows. Today's meeting is about the new national education policy. I wanted to share with you a story before I start um, giving you a little uh, insight into what the presentations will entail for you. If I may have the slide on the fun of learning, please. So there can be no learning without fun. There can be no learning without joy. I rem remember as a young girl in school in Kanpur, uh, very often when we were in class one or two, the teacher during afternoon, just before the bell would ring for the school to get over and for us to run towards the bus area or to go home, uh, she would play a game where would she, she would tell us to put our heads on the table, put your head down, she would say, and then she would actually drop a little pin and try and see whether we could hear the sound of that pin falling, pin drop silence, she called it. And she would pride herself on the discipline, on the silent zone that the classroom had begun, had become, sorry. Years later, 
when I was reading Anita Karwal's um, article on the fun of learning, her beginning of the essay took me back to that memory of years ago as a child and that pin drop silence in the classroom. And I learned over the years what a terrible practice it was because a classroom where there is silence is a terrible zone to be in. There is no learning happening in that classroom. A classroom has to be busy. A classroom has to be churning with sounds of joy, laughter, discussions, energy, movement, because only then will the curiosity of a child be satiated and only then will there be learning. So whoever says that uh, don't waste your time looking at flowers, don't waste your time looking at the stars or counting the stars, don't waste your time daydreaming and looking at clouds and looking for shapes within the clouds is not an educator. As an educator, our prime focus is to keep interest, curiosity, and that naughty spark in our children alive. And we as teachers, as adults, also have to keep that spark alive in us day after day after day. And this, in a sense, is the essence of NEP, the fun of learning. For learning to be creative, for learning to be transformational, for learning to be engaging, and for learning to be enjoyable. So it is not about content anymore. It is not about textbooks anymore, but about competency. The school has to become an enabling space where we teach our children to discover themselves, to explore their environment with joy, and to also discover their own talent and potential with joy. To also honor diversity in talent, to celebrate the differences that are there in every child and to understand, give them respect, courage and confidence in believing that each of them is capable, each of them is unique, each of them is special. This is my message to all of you, dear parents today, that our schools must become enabling spaces, creative spaces, dynamic spaces and spaces where laughter and the joy of learning thrives. I just wanted to share one slide with you, which is all about the joy of creativity. So the next slide, please. It's a funny picture, but a picture that tells us that we are happy whenever we create something. So look at this image of a balding man. All of us are very proud of our hair. And now with the age growing in numbers, our hair is dwindling in number and size and volume. So look at this beauty. He's created with the mop, something that gives him joy. So happiness is something you create, not only for yourself, but for others around you to enjoy, to engage, and to learn with depth, with meaning, and with purpose. So happiness is creativity. Education is creativity. And learning, unless it is joyful, has no purpose and no outcome. On this note, I request our coordinators to come on board and take you through the presentation of the National Education Policy and Framework. But as you can see, there is joy on campus. You have a leader and a group of teachers who are not afraid to laugh and celebrate learning with the children. Over to you, my dear coordinators. Thank you, ma'am. Before we go any further, it is important that I share an interesting and heartwarming truth with you. As we began our study of the NEP, we realized that under the able guidance of our principal and vice principal, we are already practicing a substantial part of all that has been planned for the future. This is a rewarding as well as an encouraging prospect. Vision of the policy. Through music, art, dance, literature, yoga, meditation, and sports, we stay connected. We stay connected with all that is Indian. Giving priority and recognition to all that is indigenous is crucial in the development of a sense of self-worth and belonging. We have tried to make the students aware of Indian music and dance while teaching multiplication and division in mathematics. 
We also fostered their interest in Bharatnatyam in the art integration project on angles in mathematics. Above all, we are aiding the development of global citizen, future citizens who understand and appreciate the value of sustainable development. I would now like to share a video where a dear student of ours, Devangini Chakraborty, will tell you about our humble attempt at attaining sustainability. We, the students of MBWA, do not waste our resources because nothing gets wasted. Rather, waste is wealth. Our association with vital waste has taught us the real value of the three R's. Recycling has become one of the missions of MBWA. Principles of NEP 2020, respect for diversity and local context. Celebrating differences was the theme of our school for the session 2019-2020. So we may proudly say that the vision mission of our school is already aligned to the vision of NEP 2020. We celebrate local festivals, customs, lives of famous personalities and use information they can identify with instead of foreign and unknown names and cities. We talk about Ravi living in Raipur rather than Rob in Rotterdam. Equity and inclusion. Equity is a process. Equality is the outcome. Same for similar and different for differently abled. We believe in inclusion as the cornerstone of our planning. When we design our assessments and projects, there is something for everyone. Inclusion inspires us to move ahead with renewed sense of success, whether it is our sports meet or our annual English fest. Organizations like Ektara and Calcutta Social Project are an integral part of the MBWA family. We endorse and encourage them further by promoting their beautifully made handwork. We send them as tokens of appreciation to all visiting judges. Community participation. Every year we gather food grains and extend our support to the project A Fistful of Grain, an endeavor that is undertaken by Sir Optimist International of Calcutta. Students and teachers come together to contribute. This year, due to the pandemic, teachers had alone contributed in order to sponsor midday meals for children under the poverty line at Thakurpukur. Recycling has become one of the missions of MBWA. As mentioned by Devangini, we send newspapers and old exercise and textbooks for recycling. Our association with Vital Ways deserves mention. 
Despite this pandemic, we carried on by taking action from home. We collected packets which accumulate as a result of our online shopping. They had to be sent to an organization called Give Me Trees. Visits to old age homes have always been a part of our activities as well. Use of technology. Students are regularly using apps like Pixton, Jamboard, Padlet, and Storyboard to express themselves in all subjects. Websites are being cited for ideas and material. Emphasis on conceptual learning. All questionnaire is application-based. Concepts have to be clear for a student to be able to perform well. We can say with a considerable degree of certainty that the days of rote learning are a thing of the past at MBWA. Unique capabilities. Every single learning design has something for the visual, auditory, and gynesthetic learner. There is something for everyone. We celebrate differences and nurture all that is unique. Critical thinking and creativity. Higher order thinking questions accompany all learning designs. They make students think beyond the text. Continuous review, continuous assessment is a way of life with us. Children are not assessed only through written exams but through various activities like poetry, story writing, music, dramatics, and art. Next slide, please. Next, we come to transforming curricular and pedagogical structure. Here, we will take a look at the various stages of education. Foundation stage has two categories, three years of Anganwadi, Balvatika, or preschool education for children of the age group of three to six years, two years for the age group of six to eight years, which for us are classes one and two. Next come three, comes three years of preparatory stage, which is classes three and four, three to five uh, for us. This is for the age group of eight to 11 year olds. This is followed by three years of middle school for classes six to eight and finally, four years of secondary education for classes nine to 12. This is how the structure looks like now. Next slide, ma'am. Promoting critical and creative thinking aligned to the 21st century in the classrooms. Shifting traditional assessments to competency-based assessments. Students need to apply their knowledge and even create in order to secure higher grades. All activities are experiential and hands-on. They give the children an opportunity to learn by doing. Making fruit salads and sandwiches help them to understand the importance of eating healthy. Shapes from geometry was integrated. They were also integrated in this. In the foundational stage, critical thinking and problem solving is ensured by various motor activities like writing and reading skills, tracing activities, and art appreciation. Studying works of art, different work done by different artists like Monet and Caravaggio's fruit basket broadened their horizon. A discussion on whether the fruits were stale or fresh, where they were placed, helped the teachers integrate it with English when the lesson on prepositions was being done. Hots and Real Life Connect form the major part of our assignments. Learning outcomes are mapped to our learning designs. It is no longer a vague, immeasurable concept, but a specific productive outcome which is at our fingertips, an outcome which is measured at the end of each class. This is essential for remediation, which again is an integral part of our curriculum planning. Students were able to identify and rectify errors through self-check activities. Integration of scholastic material with sports has been achieved. Colors were taught to the students of nursery and that was depicted in their virtual sports meet. Whereas the students of KG showed us how the tiger stands for leadership, the peacock teaches us to be perfect and the lotus propagates calmness. In this way, the national symbols which were being taught were incorporated in sports as well. Through alphabet yoga, we depicted the names of sleuths like Peluda and Sherlock Holmes. 
This was done by the students of classes three to five. We integrated sports with the trilingual fest, mysteriously marvelous. Art integration happens with every single lesson taught in every subject. For example, the snow leopard found in Ladakh is called the phantom. We brought in the comic creation of the same name and introduced the students to the art of writing and illustrating comic strips. Next slide, please. Next, we come to the salient features of the various stages in school. Foundational stage. Play activity based learning is conducted as this stage, matching numerals to their quantitative value with objects, sorting colors, shapes, sizes, alphabet, craft, and yoga. Transferring of articles, pouring activities are all pre reading and pre writing activities that develop fine motor skills and trains the eye for details. Furthermore, they also help in enhancing concentration. At the foundational stage, activity-based learning is incorporated across all scholastic and co-scholastic subjects. For example, while teaching prepositions, the teacher played a game of scavenger hunt, told them to search for one naming word and make a sentence using a preposition and an adjective. While teaching them about a lesson in English literature, children were taken on a virtual tour to various Indian tea gardens and a virtual tea party was organized where they had to make tea and speak about the process and ingredients used. This can also be considered as experiential learning and moving from concrete to abstract. Focus on good behavior, courtesy, ethics, personal and public hygiene and cleanliness. We focus on good behavior and have the good manners week to reinforce all that is important. Children were taught table manners and had to lay the table and speak about the same in a few sentences. Personal and public hygiene, all activities held during Swaj Bharat week, as well as the safety measures discussed, were targeted to achieve these goals. Focus on teamwork and cooperation is amply demonstrated during activities like the concerts and Grandparents' Day, where we try and attend 100% participation. In the preparatory stage, gradual transition takes place from play-based learning to more formal classroom learning. Interactive teaching learning forms the basis of productivity at this stage. Introduction of new subjects including physical education is demonstrated as we begin with our Krida Kunj activities in class three. Subjects like science, history, and geography are introduced. Emphasis is on reading, writing, and speaking. Learning becomes more formal at this stage. Next, we come to early childhood care and education or ECCE. As a continuation of what I just mentioned, all of these efforts will make sure that the child entering class one is ready with a certain set of skills. They must be able to read, comprehend, and become independent writers. The students must be able to perform basic mathematical operations. Above all, develop basic life skills, which must be taught through general awareness. After this, we come to the highlights of pedagogical structure. Here we find competency-based education where higher order thinking questions are the order of the day. And if competencies are not built, no student will be able to answer such questions which are based on application. Concepts must be clear for them to be able to create. Integration of subjects is done so that the learning is holistic and complete. In all subjects, elaborate and extensive work was done on Ladakh and West Bengal. All topics taught are integrated with various subjects. While teaching money, we emphasize that the currency of various countries, languages spoken there, geographical location of the place, folk tales, music, art, Learning has to be all encompassing for it to be complete. Development of scientific temper. Scientific temper is developed as students participate in projects like nurture a life. Here they took care of a plant. Seasonal and local flowers were also used by them to dye clothes for a project in class four. 
we believe in encouraging and even inculcating a questioning attitude. This best develops a scientific temper in students. No hard separation between curricular, co-curricular and extracurricular subjects must be there. While planning assignments, all the skills are targeted. Students are given research work to develop digital literacy. Project work is assigned for collaboration. While teaching food and health, the nervous system, various forms of exercises were taught. Promotion of multilingual teaching. All assemblies are trilingual. We celebrate Hindi Divas on 14 September and Bengali Bhasa Day on 21st February every year. Values are looked into while teaching all subjects. Even a math paper has its fair share of value-based questions. Children were given story sums in math where we imparted the values of sharing, caring, and being empathetic. For example, mother brought 34 chocolates for me. I shared 14 with my friend. How many chocolates do I have? Very simple, but extremely effective. Next slide, please. The 4D framework for classrooms, 21st century pedagogies, modernized disciplines based on story-based and experiential learning are practiced. Pra here, dramatics and role play lead the way. Art integrated learning. For example, in mathematics, students learned patterns through the activities done, done in dance, music, art, and craft. In science, Students got involved in active listening, puppet dance, shadow puppetry, puppet making, and conversation. Songs were sung related to the topics, integration of subjects. All subjects came together to celebrate the union of Ladakh and West Bengal, as I had mentioned earlier. Craft was made on the apricot tree found in Ladakh and the mangroves of Sundarbans. This was being done when simultaneously they were being taught about flora in science. Sports integrated learning. Sports finds space in our learning from the foundation stages as I have mentioned. Now it was integrated with scholastic teaching through colors and national symbols. Videos and recordings were shared with the students and parents to further the teaching learning process. Children and teachers have overcome the teething problems of using technology. They are definitely technology abled as they comfortably handle various applications to their advantage. Problem-based learning hone their critical thinking skills. For example, students were asked to earn money by helping the parents at home for a week. This they were supposed to do to save and count how much was earned in a week. The following week, they were asked to spend the money they had earned. Finally, to calculate how much they earned, spent and saved. So mathematical skills, respect, values, critical thinking, where to spend, how to save, all these competencies were inculcated and enhanced. In order to make 21st century goals a success, we focus on growth mindset, where all stakeholders concerned like teachers, parents, and students come together. This alone will help us create a true global citizen. Next, we come to encouraging 21st century skills in the classroom. All activities, videos shown, or research work given are aimed at developing the 21st century skills, as I have mentioned. For instance, while teaching parts of speech an activity on songwriting and creating a video was done. Communication was enhanced through various Adda sessions. The fond memories of our Pujo Adda and Forever Feluda will remain in our hearts for a long, long time to come. Riddles form a part of our worksheets so that competencies are tested and learning outcomes measured. Peer teaching has enhanced problem solving skills and communication. Projects have resulted in teamwork and collaboration. Meditation and drill assemblies are our systematic attempt to take care of health and fitness. Social responsibilities, while teaching a lesson in literature, children had to write about their act of bravery in a few sentences. So when they were talk learning about Mulan, they had to go back and think and apply and talk about themselves and their acts of bravery. 
children were sensitized about being respectful towards both men and women and boycott gender discrimination. Social responsibility is something which has been completely imbibed by the entire MBWA family. Here I would like to mention an endeavor which is dear to all of us. It is the ATF. The food ATF has brought all of us together. Here I would like to thank the parents for their contributions and their constant support. Students have come forth and celebrated their birthdays by sharing with the community. The fridge which is used was bought with our carnival proceeds. This I felt I must share with all of you. Therefore, it must be noted that the carnival has helped us where community service and social responsibility is concerned. Parents, I would like to thank you once again for your constant support. Next, we come to something which again is very dear to us, that is our country, India. The new education policy talks about how important it is for children to have knowledge of India. Students learn to take pride in Indian art while learning stick drawing for projects. They were also able to delve into the rich natural resources of India while comparing the heights of mountains and depths of rivers and learn to respect the same. Google Earth has, was a godsend for teachers. A tour of the Bimbetka Caves in Madhya Pradesh left everyone spellbound. A project was planned where students listed the similarities between the tribes of Ladakh and the Shantals of West Bengal. Right now, we are gearing up to celebrate 125 years of Netaji's birthday. Finally, we come to a topic which is extremely pertinent in today's world, as it has always been, if you think about it. Health is wealth. And health education can never take a back seat. During Junk the Junk Food Week, children were taught about different types of healthy and unhealthy food. Children were told to make healthy and nutritious sandwiches based on their understanding of the lesson on food in EDS. All classes were given a fruit break of 10 minutes. Every student was asked to carry a fruit. This was done to encourage healthy food habits. Food monitors were designated with the task of checking the nutrition and health quotient of the food brought to school. Healthy menus were prepared by the teachers and uploaded on the website for all to see and follow. Muri Sale, the, the healthy puffed rice concoction made by the students of class five every year is a perfect marriage of the study of health, hygiene, and nutrition. This demonstrates experiential learning at its best. When all of this is also being taught simultaneously in their science classes, mental health and well being is of prime significance. Therefore, regular sessions with the counselor is available. This has been a pillar of strength for struggling students during the pandemic. Now, as I have shared the infographic documents, it shows all that we have done. The students of nursery and KG did the pepper and hand wash activity. Classes one and two showed us the correct use of masks, soap, gloves, and other such articles. The students of classes three and four were taught how to make sanitizers using aloe vera gel and Dettol. Through role play, class fives learned how to treat basic ailments like stomach and toothache. Thank you, dear parents, for your constant support and patience. Now I would like to hand over the proceedings to my dear colleague, Ma'am E.P. Sarkar. Thank you so much, Charvani, ma'am. We go on to the next slide. Leveraging the power of multilingualism and language learning. NEP says that children whose primary language is not the language of instruction 
find it difficult to adjust in the school environment. Hence, mother tongue is to be used as the medium of instruction wherever possible. We do design fun activities and projects in school to familiarize students with the languages and develop a love for it. We celebrate the language days, be it Hindi, Bengali, or English. We have Bhasa Divas and Bhasa Club. Videos were made on International Mother Tongue Day and shared through our class groups. Hindi and Bengali get a prominent place in our assemblies as well, along with English, and they are trilingual in nature. The next slide. Transforming assessments for student development. The shift from rote memorization skills to formative, where emphasis is more on competencies which promotes learning and development of students. We have been designing assessments which test the higher order skills, such as analysis, critical thinking, and conceptual understanding, and they are all value-based. We do use multiple ways to assess children, be it oral or written, through worksheets, work sets, projects, subjective, objective, multiple choice questions, and through Google Forms. Rubrics are discussed with the children. All assessments are graded. We do have remedial classes or improvement sessions with the children based on their performance in class. In this pandemic too, we took online remedial classes for our children. All these are done to boost the confidence of the students. Next slide. Transforming assessments and tracking student progress across school years. NEP says that all students will take school examinations in grades three, five, and eight, which will test the achievement of basic learning outcomes through assessment of core concepts and knowledge, along with relevant higher order skills and application of knowledge in real life situations, rather than rote memorization. All our worksheets, you must have noticed, dear parents, do have such questions which do test these aspects of students, be it at the KG level or at the class five level. Next slide, please. Aspects of a holistic report card. Redesigning report cards to assess holistic development of each child so it is equitable, it ought to be inclusive, joyful, holistic. It must reflect all aspects of development, skills and competencies, be it social, emotional, cognitive or physical, attitudes and values and knowledge of course to know how much they have understood. NEP says that the holistic progress card will form an important link between home and school and will be accompanied by parent teacher meetings in order to actively involve parents in their children's holistic education and development. Self assessment, peer assessment, teacher assessment, and parent assessment will also be reflected. We do have PTMs and also call parents as and when we feel the need to discuss the child's progress and development. Our report cards not only reflect academic grades, but we do include aspects like work habits, social behavior, life skills, self-appraisal, and post-scholastic areas to make it holistic so that all aspects are assessed. Next slide, ma'am. National Assessment Center for School Education NACSE. This center will advise the school boards regarding new assessment patterns and latest researchers for promoting collaborations between the school boards and to become an instrument for sharing of best practices between school boards, etc., about shifting their assessment patterns towards meeting the skill requirements of the 21st century and in consonance with the stated objectives of this policy. 
next slide ma'am now we will take a look at the initiatives taken by cbse student enrichment activities i am happy to mention and feel proud to say that our school mahadevi billa world academy takes part in these activities the junior school has participated in khelo india where children understood the importance of games and sports the ebsb activities which is ek bharat shreshth bharat where children learned more about india and the various states especially about ladakh through various interdisciplinary projects and also the expression series and to which effect we have our expression club next slide ma'am engage with parents and community for a positive learning environment cbse has laid down a whole list but we are proud to have parents like you who are an integral part of the school and has taken keen interest in the teaching learning process of the children we do involve you all in the various events and activities be it in reading partnerships in which your participation was heartwarming the assemblies where you participate yourself and also make those beautiful videos in the making of props during concerts and events or helping children out preparing for the events and attending all our programs we cannot thank you enough for your effort and contributions in all class activities and projects too we, we are also thankful to all those parents who have come forward to to enlighten our children by conducting workshops we do seek your support in future too next slide ma'am reinvent yourself knowledge and education that we acquire has no meaning if we are not able to meet the world with confidence and face challenges children need to be independent and learn to do things for themselves take decisions and be responsible for those decisions taken this is what we try to build in the children through all our activities and projects this is how dear parents we have tried and are trying to impart quality education to our students keeping the 21st century skills and competencies in mind thereby nurturing and creating truly global citizens which is the vision of the national education policy 2020 thank you with this we come to the end of our presentation for the day parents if you have any questions you may put it in the chat box we have a respected vice principal who is going to answer them kindly also share the links of the google form yes uh, ma'am we would really value the feedback of this session from parents so there's a google form link that we are posting on the chat box and i'm sure teachers will make it available through the class whatsapp groups as well and if you have any questions uh, we can take a couple of questions now otherwise feel free to write to us to write to me on the official email and i'll be happy to uh resolve your queries if i can because the nep is a formulation a plan in progress so as and when things become clear to us uh we shall share them with you but for the time being i'm happy to say that we are all aligned in vision and in spirit we've got one question ma'am is there any planning for enlightening students about vocational education before leaving the school yes so uh, would you would you want to answer that ms ghosh or should i take the question i think ma'am this pertains to middle school so i think uh, it's better so there is a plan for vocational education and skilling students because now according to the nep they want to give equal weightage to academic as well as vocational education and vocational education as they see it is an extension of life skills that are so important for survival and to cope with the world that waits for them outside the school gates hence to make a beginning from class 6 onwards 
There is a compulsory skill subject that the student must add on. These are subjects like um, local handicrafts, uh, local crafts, woodwork. There's a whole list of uh, vocational subjects that we all need to introduce. Yes, we also have plans to introduce them because we must. It is made compulsory by the board to expose students from class six onwards to vocational training as per their choice. So just like we offer subjects for stream selection in class 11, we will be offering some subjects that are vocational in class six. Parents and students may make their choices according to their interest and aptitude. And not only is the theory of the subject going to be taught, but also the application because students must do an internship with the craft of their choice or the skill of their choice during the vacations. So there is a mandatory period of internship during which the students may engage with a local craftsman, a local potter, a local carpenter, and learn more about the skills and the trade and the business in action in a very elementary manner and submit reports of their internship. So slowly but surely, um, the education department is moving towards skilling students at a very young age to make them more employable once they leave school and move towards college. I hope that has answered your question. So in fact, we are going to train our teachers that the first pilot course that is coming out is local handicrafts. So for students, to get expertise, idea about the local handicrafts and how to learn and promote them as a business, as a venture, as a skill, as an industry. It doesn't mean that your daughter or your son will become a carpenter, but they will have respect for professions. They will learn about the skills of the trade and the person who has made a choice of having a vocational education will not be looked down upon. So it'll be equal, it'll be more inclusive. And that is something we're going to start in our school as well. Uh, all right, there's one question over here, but I'm sorry, Mr. Agarwal, we are not going to take this because uh, this doesn't have any bearing with uh, NEP 2020. Uh, so we'll talk to you later, I think, personally. You know, but I can answer this question in the light of NEP. I because know, the I... NEP is telling you to equip your children with competencies for survival. And this is survival. Absolutely. Because you need to adjust and adapt. Adaptability is a skill. Adaptability is a competency. Nine years ago, when I came to Mahadevi Birla World Academy, after having worked with the Martinia Morton High or DPS, I was completely lost. I was completely at sea. But I think it has been my training in childhood, in my young years, that has given me the ability to cope and make the best out of whatever situation that life throws me in. And that's what we want our children to learn. We can't keep protecting them for the rest of their lives. And that training has to start young. And I think this pandemic has taught us a lot and all of us have coped. So I guess this is, uh, this is not going to be a problem for anybody at all. I think we can take a couple of more questions yes. before we wind up the session. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, there are a lot of praises, ma'am. Wonderful idea, looking forward, well-planned uh, session. Okay, uh, Mrs. Datta Wright, first of all, thank you so much for this wonderful initiative uh, with the possibility of extension of online classes through the new academic session, as well as for junior section at least. How do we plan for field activities, offline activities, which are an integral part of NEP? Okay, uh, ma'am, may I take this uh, yes, question? Please do. Okay, please do. Uh, uh, Mrs. Datta, I, I think, you know, uh, right now, offline field activities are not really, uh, we, we are not looking at it. But as you know, you know, field activities in the sense, I think the children have been taken on virtual tours, right? So that is, uh, you know, that is basically a substitute for the excursions that they used to go for. And as reports come in, I think, uh, the teachers are also, you know, uh, I mean, you know, they're dressed to the occasion, they're dressed for the occasion, and they're all wearing binoculars, they're taking their binoculars, and they're wearing their goggles and hats, and they have their tiffins ready along with their water bottles, and they've visited a number of places. And in fact, they've become uh, globetrotters, right? So this is the way we are uh, actually looking so at... Also, also, once the vaccination drive is complete, 
and uh, things come back full circle. We look forward to resuming classes on campus, but I cannot announce a date because I want our children to be safe. More than anything else, their safety, their health is of foremost importance. So for the junior school, this hybrid model or the continuation of online classes will be there for a while till I have all the safety mandates and the government mandates in place. And when that happens, slowly but surely, in very, very small groups, we will take them out of class, we'll give them time out, and we'll give them outdoor experiences. But of course, we have to keep the safety primarily in mind. That is of utmost uh, importance right now. There's one parent who's asking that whether we have regular games periods. Yes, we do have. And uh, in fact, uh, when they come back on campus, of course, that happens to be an integral part. And as you know, from, you know, children going from classes two to three, we'll be sharing the Google form with you. They are going to take up Kriyakunj activities. In fact, from the new session, they will start having their Kriyakunj classes. Hello. However, virtually. Right. I'm in a meeting. I'll call you once back. they come back, once they come back, then we will decide, you know, how to go about the whole thing. Uh, I think we should, I think this is the last question we can take. When the offline school will start, is there any provision for online classes also? so that the skill will be nurtured. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. As uh, our principal has already said, we are going to follow a hybrid model. It has to be a, you know, a combination of online as well as offline classes till such time as normalcy is restored. But I also think that we've discovered this wonderful um, module or this wonderful method of staying connected using the online portal because uh, normally we don't get such a huge response from parents. So even if we are continuing with our uh, offline classes, whenever things come back to so-called normal, this is something that we will keep engaging and exploring so that we can have a better connect with parents or for remedials or to have extra activities or conversations. This is a wonderful platform and we will certainly not do away with it. So we've discovered it recently, but it is here to stay. Yes, absolutely. And uh, yes, we will take uh, definitely, uh, that's a good advice that you've given us. There's one parent who's writing that uh, periodicals or examinations should be held in school. We will definitely, we are thinking about it. In fact, uh, the seniors are coming to school and giving their examinations. Where the juniors are concerned, we will keep this in mind, definitely. Seniors and middle school will have offline exams in the new session. Juniors, I will not commit till I know what is safe for them. I will not commit anything till life on campus is safe for my little ones. I don't want to rush them into anything. Uh, let them take it easy. Uh, assessments are just a very, very small part of this journey of learning. Assessments and examinations are just a drop in the ocean. What is more important for them is to keep learning, to keep engaging, to keep enjoying. On that note, I think we'll wrap up today's session. Thank you so, so much for joining with us this afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you, parents. And as ma'am has said, you know, health is wealth. And we sincerely believe in this. Thank you for gracing the occasion. And uh, thank you for all the lovely things that you're saying. I think uh, we are absolutely in cloud nine. We've been here, uh, you know, the entire day and we really feel rejuvenated uh, reading all your comments. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please do take time to fill in the feedback. That's important for us. Because as you know, the CBSC would also ask us later, have we done the dissemination? And we want to engage with parents on a closer level, on a more regular level, which is why your feedback is very important for us. Kindly write in using the feedback form. Yes, sure, ma'am. The link is going to remain open till 9 p.m. And uh, we will share the link once again in the WhatsApp groups. Ms. Basu has posted the link over there. Over to you, Shorbani ma'am, for wrapping up the session. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, ma'am, Sarkar will speak. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, parents, a uh, reminder, as ma'am has said, that uh, please do fill up the questionnaire and uh, submit it by 9 p.m. today because the link is going to be active till then. I end the day with a quote by the famous author C. Joy Bell C. Ends are not bad things. They just mean that something else is about to begin. And there are many things that don't really end anyway. They just begin again in a new way. Ends are not just bad, 
and many ends aren't really an ending. Some things are never ending. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Dear parents and partners, we seek your cooperation and support to make NEP 2020 a reality, implement it to the fullest and make learning a positive and a joyful one for our children. Thank you once again. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, ma'am.